Hello everyone and welcome to the exercise 4 of the Kima Runtime Dev Oktoberfest. My name is Daniel Severo and I'm going to show you how to create a new Lambda services in your Kima cluster and expose them using OAuth 2. In the previous exercise, we have created a new microservices with a simple web application. That web application has two simple JavaScript functions that are generating random numbers. As you can see here, we have the web app up and running. This exercise 4, we're going to extract these functions inside the web app and expose them as a serverless services in our Kima cluster. In the exercise 4, you're going to learn how to create a new serverless services in Kima, how to create an OAuth 2 credentials, and how to configure the serverless to be secured and authenticated using OAuth 2. If you have followed the previous exercise, we had created a structure of folder and projects to run the web app. For the exercise 4, we are going to create a new project folder. As we are separating the project between front-end and back-end service, it makes sense to create different projects. Then you have different versioning, build, and deploy pipeline. Let's create a new folder project name, number generator service. And inside of it, let's create three different folders, source, where you place the Lambda source code, the config, where the client OAuth 2 will be configured, and a test folder. Let's go to our command line and get into the new project folder. Let's create inside the source folder the deployment YAML file to deploy our first serverless function. This is the content of deployment YAML. Let's start to analyze it. We're going to call the serverless schema project API to create an object of kind function. For the definitions in the metadata, we need to set the name and we also can add some label selectors. The spec section contains important parts of the definition. The depth sections contain the part of the Lambda that can be compared to an package JSON file where you can set the name, version of the application, and also the library dependencies. The source code of the Lambda belongs to the spec session. You can insert your Node.js code here. That always starts with module.export sentence. The code block is the same that we have extracted from our web app. The UML file can also contain resource utilization limits and for this, we are restricting to a small size. To create the serverless function into Kima using CLI, we can use kubectl command, as in the previous exercise. Just write kubectl apply minus f deployment.yaml and inform the namespace that you want to create it. For this, we are going to use the dev Oktoberfest namespace. The output of command is that the serverless was created. To check and validate the status of the function, we can use the comment kubectl get function number generator service inside the namespace dev Oktoberfest. When you execute the comment immediately, you can see that the service was created, that it was a read build, but is not running yet. It's because it is in deployment process. Waiting a few seconds more, run the command again, and done. We have our first serverless service running. Let's create our second serverless function. Let's edit our deployment YAML file, and below the current function, we're going to create the new function that generated the five random numbers. You can see that the definition has the same structure, but we are changing the name of the service. That's a brand new but you are using the same namespace. A different piece of the definition is related to the spec session. For this serverless function, we are declaring a new library dependence, that's the Axios. In the code part, you can see that, as the previous one, we have extracted the web app JavaScript code that generate those five random numbers. We have a special thing to explain here. With the Axios library, we are going to make a REST call to the Lambda service that we have created before. The URL access use the same of name of the service defined in the metadata, dot the name of the namespace that it was created. As the default, the Lambdas are created running on the port 
18. This is a HTTP call. Let's save the file and create the service into the Kima cluster. Let's use the same command as before using kubectl apply minus f using the same deployment file. You can see that the output shows us that the number generator service was unchanged and the new one was created. Let's test if the new function was already created. Type your CLL command kubectl get function numbers generator services indicating again the namespace dev Oktoberfest. And there it is. The new function is already up and running. Let's move in forward to expose both of new serverless function to the public access. For the separator of control, we are going to create a new file to take care of the security of the services. Let's create a new file named securityfunctions.yaml. Inside the file, we need to create a new object of the type API rule that's responsible for the rules of expose a service in Kima. We have different informations here. We have to specify the name of the object in the names in the metadata, the gateway used by Kima to control the API rule, and what is the service that we are binding the rule here. You can see that in the service, we have the name of the service that we have created before. In the rule sections, we are telling to Kima that every request received in the dot slash path are able to receive HTTP GET methods. And the strategy to access the resourcing is using the OAuth2 authentication. When the token is requested to access the function, it needs to receive at least the read access and the scope. Let's save the file and deploy the API rules to the Kima. Let's type the command kubectl apply minus f securityfunctions.yaml into the dev Oktoberfest namespace. So the API rules are created both of them. So right now, we can try to test it and consume the API. What do you think? Let's use the command core to do it. Core minus IQ, the name of our service. Mm, you can see it's waiting some time. Well, there's a message that the name of our service cannot be resolved. That happens because any new service running local with Minikube need to be added to our etc rows file. Let's add the new service entries into the host file. At the end of your file, you can find the whole names defined for your Minikube IP. Add the new entries and save the file. Let's try to call the service again. Perfect, as fast as it can. You can see the message that it has received a response of HTTP 401 of unauthorized. Also in the bottom of the message. This happened because we didn't get any authorized token before. Let's work on this. Next step, we're going to create OAuth2 client and secret inside Kima. For the organization, we are moving to the folder config in this project. Let's create the file named createcredentials.yaml. On this file, we're going to add the creation of a new OAuth2 client kind of the object. In the metadata, we specify the name of the client 
in the in the spec sections we need to define the kind of the grant credentials and scope for this exercise we are going to create a client credentials and the read access on the scope to create this api rule on Kima, let's use the common kubectl save your file and in the prompt type kubectl apply minus f credentials.yaml setting again the name dev oktoberfest as namespace we have two options in the client credential to create we can manually define the client id and the client secret but in our case we have left to the schema define it let's use the command kubectl to get those credentials for each one of the next get commands from Kima, we're going to store the values into environment variables. Then we are going to use them to authenticate our services. First variable will be the client name. That was the object that was just created. Also, we have the namespace in local domain. The client ID you'll be obtaining from Kima using the kubectl get secret command. We are also telling to the Kima with this command that you want that the output of the descriptor be in a JSON format. Then in this way, we can parse the get only of the data client ID value. At the end of the comment, we also decode the value using base64 command. To see the value returned, we can use the command echo to the client ID variable. Let's repeat the process also to the client secret. To authenticate our service, the first thing that you need to do is call the OAuth token authorization from Kima with a POST command. It needs to receive an encoded credential that's built using the client ID and client secret together. The appended values need to be encoded as base64. Doing an echo in the encoded credentials, we know What's the result? Now we're going to use the curl command to post an HTTP request to the oauth2.kima.local to get the authorized token. So right here in this line, we are passing in the header the authorization basic with the encoded credential that we are just built. This is a post form request, so we are also passing the fields grants type and scope together. Now we have an authorized token to be used with our Lambda services. Let's try. Using the curl command, we're going to call our Lambda service passing in the header the barrier token previously generated. And voila, we have received the HTTP 200 answer. So let's try with the other service too. Great, you have done. With our services created, exposed, and secured by OAuth 2 authentication, it's time to see the Kima UI console and see how to navigate in those new objects. Inside the Dev Oktoberfest namespace, we can see three current deployments and five pods running, and that is the result of our work here. In the function sections, you can see the lambdas that was created. Here, both functions are available, up and running, and you can see the label selectors too. 
click in one of them and let's take a look. The first thing that you can see in the upper right corner of the screen is the status of the service. It may change if you have doing some modifications on the Lambda. You have two sides here, that's the code and the appendices. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the option to inject environment variables. We have the configuration tab where we can see the API rule created for our services. It shows the name and the URL of the exposed service. Click on it and you can see that no matter if you are on the CLI or in the web, it needs to be authenticated first. Let's go back to our first web application that was using local functions and we will adapt the code to consume the new services exposed in Kima. We have created in our JavaScript file a new function named fetch token that will be responsible to authenticate on Kima and use the token in the both of servers. For the example purpose, the client credentials are set manually here. As we are using the fetch command to call the APIs, we can use the token and directly call the methods generate and generated number, passing the bearer token received. So let's test this web application locally first. To see the entire code adapted, go to our code repository in the exercise 4. Here is the result of our web app consuming the Kima serverless functions. After adapting the code of the web application, we may want to deploy it again as a microservice to the Kima. As we are running, on Minikube locally, we need to go to our deployment YAML file of the web app and inject the local IP of our Minikube. Inside the pods, it cannot resolve the names itself to connect with the oauth2.kima.local. So we are adding here the host alias section. After change the application, we need to create a new Docker image so that's what, what you're going to do. We're going to tag it as a new Docker image and we will going to use the tag exercise4. We're going to publish this new Docker image generator to the public repo. Use your own repo to consider to deploy this application. Then we're going to apply this new application to the Kubernetes changing the deployment YAML file, changing the tag of this Docker image. After it was applied, we can go to the Kima provisional URL and access our microservices web application. Click on the button and you can see that everything is still working. Thank you for joining us in the Dev Oktoberfest and thanks for practice or exercise. Be prepared to go to the next exercise five. You can reach us with your questions or any problem that you have. Go to our repository of the event and create a new issue. Stay in touch.